Right, please. Uh, I think you wish to accord to Agus Gohaira, William Pure Queen Fault, her look and Yarawina, Hashtag and Show, especially the New England Test Bonfist Show. It's uh, it's over 20 years ago since we first had an exhibition of Gertrude being in Hearts. We've known her for longer than that, I'm happy to say, and uh, it's been a wonderful working relationship, <coughs> which has been continually enlivened by all kinds of fantasies and imaginations and remarkably skilled and wonderful works. And so it's a pleasure to welcome you all to this further exhibition of <coughs> fantasy and imagination and incredible artistic skill. <coughs> I'd like to say a special word of welcome to those who have traveled from Germany to be here with us today. You're really very welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure. It makes just a bit more of a celebration out of uh, this exhibition and this day. And no doubt to equally make a celebration out of it, we're very proud and privileged to welcome Bob Quinn, who is a dear friend for many, many years, a very distinguished broadcaster, journalist, filmmaker, photographer, writer, author, it's a litany, I'm not going to keep going on all the time, but a man uh, of great, great culture. So would you welcome please to open the exhibition, Bob Quinn. It's uh, 11 years actually since I opened uh, um, an exhibition of Gertrude's work first and I remember I was a fan of hers because I'd seen her pictures at Kenny's and I was thrilled to open it and, uh, I, it, and I'm delighted to see that the, the old Kenny's is immortalized mm -hmm. uh, number one properly, number one uh, and yeah, I said at the time that uh, she was the most precise, hilarious documentarist of our psyche that I'd ever come across in paintings and in art. I'm a Philistine, by the way. I know very little about art, but I know what I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we had an identifiable psyche. And she was what I called my Rorschach ink block. <laughs> because I looked at her pictures and I saw a lot of things that I'm sure she didn't intend it, but I'm entitled to use their, her pictures as springboards for my ludicrous imagination. And at the time, 11 years ago, I decided that her work was too good for me to just waffle on off the cuff and make up things as I went along. And I wrote down what I thought, and I decided that that was the best policy this time, so I could, I could say exactly what I thought of what her pictures suggested to me. And that's what I did. So, here's what I thought. In the last decade, we turned our backs on the truths that Gertrude revealed. The mad, bleak, desperate, joyful, all singing, all dancing, despairing defiance that was our natural expression, and of course that of the human race in general, of which we were just a metaphor. And in that decade, the so-called, ever in the past decade, the so-called freedom of the market gradually shrank the environment that had allowed us human beings to soar freely to go to hell in our own sweet way it was shrunk by a host of pc measures such as banning drinking and smoking in places to find as public our space so we had to become furtive smokers and domestic alcoholics <laughs> instead of the gay unashamed fallible doomed social creatures we once were at least we could go down altogether really. And now we became isolated, atomized, well, isolated and atomized, that's not. That life of death, which she had so wonderfully celebrated, was now intradig. We were now officially joyless Calvinists. Hughes Pub in Spinoff nearly died of boredom. <laughs> we became careful, cute, and cool. We expunged the street and pub characters and down there expunged ourselves. We got rid of theology, put another cotology in its place. Subprime mortgage, mortgage and all the evil that flowed from them. We cultivated beamers and lattes and weekend cottages. We shed our rags and took the hoodies and IGS runners. Having abandoned the idea of spiritual immortality, and turned ethics into a relativism that was worthy of Einstein, we opted for trying to keep our bodies immortal. We became dedicated marathon runners, joggers, gym members, and built speed tracks to arrive a few minutes earlier at a traffic jam. 
<laughs> our commercial public public broadcaster led the field, jettisoning 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 regionalism and traditional turns of phrase for the po-faced, shrill new speak of victimhood and righteousness. The fault was not in ourselves, but in our stars, our celebs, our politicians, our bishops, bankers, barristers, consultants, joyriders, drug barons. The fault was in everybody except ourselves. And not even the Hieronymus Bosch imagination of Gertrude Degenhardt could portray the new reality, I thought. What many sensed was a living death for which money and property were the only palliative. And now the decade of madness is over. And here we are, prodigal children, literal metaphors, on our arses, with a rag to our backs, up to our eyes in it, facing a bleak future, not a penny to bless ourselves with, lighting candles to St. Anthony, etc., etc. And once again, in this exhibition, Degenhardt has captured us. <coughs> Incidentally, I hope you've all looked through the book as well, because I know some of the pictures that are in this book, as I interpret, is a wonderful book, but they always are masterpieces of production, are not here, so you should really look at that book as well. She's lost her patience with us, I think. Du bist nicht, du bist jetzt ein, ein bisschen ungeduld mit uns. Um, <laughs> and she's holding up a mirror to our idiocy. When we did actually eat and drink to excess, and the devil took all the hindrance, as usual. And it was, as we know to our cost, a worldwide madness. And here's the documentation in the only form that matters, art. You can have your tribunals, your tropical forests of print journalism, your fog of endless recrimination. You'll switch them off, use them for fishing ships tomorrow, but Degenhardt's images will still linger. I'm glad this exhibition is part retrospective, part new, the beautiful temper I've never seen before, the wonderful. Uh, and the wonderful thing is in, in this exhibition is that in portraying a dramatically different culture, Gertrude is loyal to the same repertory actors, like the best filmmakers. They use the same actors again and again because they try it and true and trust them. And they can say everything through these actors. And Gertrude can say everything through the same actors. The same pointy-nosed, rat-faced, bombastic, bearded, <laughs> damn-it-all males, the same buxom, generous, careless women that were in our pictures 20, 30 years ago are still cavorting, <laughs> albeit slightly chastened, in new costumes. In other words, she's showing the same human race again, this time getting above itself and then falling lower than ever before in its hangover stage. Look at the book. Even the title of our exhibition, It's About Time to Have a Good Time, is ironic paraphrasing the idiotic exhortations of Bush and Bertie, by the way, and others, to shop ourselves out of the depression. 